Good morning. Um, buenos dias, everyone. Thank you for joining the Investing in Youth panel with Dr. Ross, CEO of the California Endowment and members of the, Cal um, of the California Endowment's President's Youth Council. Uh, my name is Lupe and I am calling in from Comey Island here in San Diego. And I am a fellow for the President's Youth Council. And so I'll work closely with all of these beautiful people um, on the screen. Uh, and what, we'll start off with a few of introductions. Uh, we could go ahead and have Jill, Carla, and then Dr. Ross introduce um, themselves. Your name, uh, pronoun, where you're calling in from, and your role. Gio? Um, What's up, y'all? My name is Jaheem Jones. Uh, a lot of folks call me Gio. I'll go by him, his, and I'm calling from Richmond, California. Morning, everyone. Carla, she, her, hers, calling in from Tonga Lands, East LA, Boyle Heights area. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Bob Ross, president of the California Endowment. He, him, her, he, he, him, his, and I'm calling from Los Angeles, uh, home of the hopefully soon to be world champion Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you for the hopes, Dr. Roz. Um, so now that we, we actually want to start off with you, Dr. Roz, um, for you to give a quick background on why did you create the President's Youth Council um, and what was the intention behind it? If you could give like a quick history. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lupe. So by, by way of background, um, you know, we should all just be aware and take into account that you know, we're living at a very pivotal and potentially transformative moment in our nation's history, uh, probably the most important social justice moment in the last, uh, easily the last 50 years, maybe even the last 100 years, um, given COVID and some of the racial injustice um, events that have happened. So, uh, but even prior to that, um, I always wanted to make sure in my role as a, as a, as a foundation president, uh, accountable for, you know, Three billion, $3 billion in resources to improve the health and wellness um, for vulnerable communities. I wanted to make sure I had young people in my brain uh, buzzing in my head around their ideas. Um, the history of social justice, not just in this country, but globally has shown that young people are always at the forefront of social justice change. People named Martin Luther King, named John Lewis, Nelson Mandela, Dolores Huerta, Mayim Wright Edelman, uh, the Black Lives, more recently, the Black Lives uh, Matter movement and the Dreamers, um, those are young people who, who were well into their teens or in their early 20s when they started their social justice work. Um, John Lewis, uh, who recently died, uh, delivered a keynote speech at the March on Washington in 1963. He was 22 years old, 23 years old when he gave that speech. So I really wanted to make sure that the energy, the vibrancy, the passion, the ideas of young people were closer in my head um, and I wanted to, to establish a youth council to make sure that I was I'm close to those ideas. So we did that seven years ago. Uh, the way the youth council works very briefly is we have 14 healthy community sites across the state of California. We try to have one youth representative from each of the sites. So around a dozen to 14 youth members, uh, their ages range from 16 to 24 or so. Um, they come from distressed and difficult neighborhoods um, around, around the, uh, the state of California. And I try to, to fashion my conversations with them the same way I fashion our uh, board of directors meetings. Uh, we meet about four times a year. Uh, we meet for two to three days um, over that um, each one of those times. Um, I hear from the young people, we have sort of open mic where young people get to check in. And then we have more structured conversations around strategy or topics or issues. Uh, and so they have uh, been able to fill my brain with um, their thoughts and their passions about our work. And summarizing that, I would just say, uh, you know, Lupe and to everyone here, um, you know, we, the, the Youth Council has, uh, we're on a, we have a 10 year strategic plan at the California Endowment. We also have a corresponding youth action plan strategic youth action plan from the PYC members uh, to me and the board. So we have their ideas for how we should be investing uh, our grant dollars and resources um, to make communities healthier for young people and their families. 
uh, but I'll just tick off really quickly the ideas I've heard from them over the years that we're beginning to, 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 to put into practice. Uh, one is the importance of full inclusion, absolute full inclusion for all young people, uh, race, ethnicity, uh, uh, gender, sexual orientation, number one. Number two, uh, the importance of trauma. Young people are reporting there's a lot of um, emotional trauma uh, that young people are subject to. It impacts their health and impacts their wellness. So they've been able to arm me with more of a, a trauma-informed approach uh, to our, our grant making or our strategies. Number three, ideas like closing youth prisons, uh, that we should be a better nation than putting young people in detention facilities and we should find community-based alternatives to put them in. Next, schools as wellness centers. Schools need to be more conscious of uh, trauma and, and, and emotional uh, uh, challenges that young people come to school with and that schools need to be much more uh, attentive to that. Uh, next, uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship in young people for wellness, uh, making sure that um, their ideas for, um, for wellness uh, through the lens of being entrepreneurs are, are advanced and making sure that, that we just started, um, as you know, Lupe, the Youth Philanthropy Institute, um, where many grants are provided by, um, by the Youth Council uh, that encourage entrepreneurship for wellness, uh, more mission and impact investing. And then uh, lastly, uh, an important role for, again, along the lines of healing, making sure that there are community spaces dedicated to healing, restoration, reflection, and gathering and kinship by young people, uh, that uh, they need their own spaces, hopefully in, 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 in spaces owned by the community and owned at the grassroots level uh, to move uh, wellness um, and healing forward. That's very important to their social justice work and their social justice orientation. So that's the snapshot summary of the PYC, um, how it works, uh, why we were inspired to do it. And it's been uh, the most brilliant thing. I, I've done a lot of things that have been pretty dumb in my life um, and not, not as many that were brilliant, but this one was pretty brilliant. I'm really glad we did it. And we're learning so much from these young people and you'll have a chance to hear from them now. Thank you, Dr. Oz. I do think you have brilliant young people in the Youth Council as well. <laughs> um, and I do, and I remember, <laughs> I remember Dr. Ross um, reaching out to, to the Youth Council and letting us know um, what are some recommendations, what are those goals that you all envision, um, and pushing us to dream big and, and um, you know, think about what is that ideal life that we want to see and we want to live in. Um, so we, we, we went ahead and we drafted a memo, I remember in 2018, and we sent that out to folks and then 2020 came along and we submitted the action plan. So it's been years of work um, developing and talking to our young people and reflecting even our own experiences um, when we sit in circle with Dr. Ross and we sit in circle with the Youth Council uh, that help us shape and, and really uh, write these recommendations down. So I, I know that the space that you've created with the PYC is very valuable. Um, and so I, we will go ahead and, and Gio and Carla will talk a little bit more about their experiences um, with the Youth Philanthropist Institute that Dr. Ross was talking about, and as well as what it really means to envision a youth leadership pipeline and investing in young people. Um, and so Jill will touch a little bit about that. Um, but in the action plan, and that folks get a chance to read it um, and take a look at it, we divide our recommendations to five different areas. Uh, and each and every one of them have tangible, uh, practical goals that we could do within a year or two. And some of them actually already happened based on the uprisings and like the movement of young people over the last couple of months. Um, so some of us were like really excited and surprised on how fast things can move when young people really step into their power. Um, but I will, I will definitely pass this over to Carla right now uh, for her to share a little bit about um, her experience in, in the Young, young Philanthropist Institute and what was the value, value of it. Carla? Thank you, Lupe, and thank you, Dr. Ross, for setting the framework and giving um, a little brief history in terms of who PYC is and the structure of what we've been trying to do for the last couple of years. Um, and just to echo off what Dr. Ross said, he does have 
brilliant minds of young people working there. I am one of them. I will give myself a little hooray, kudos to myself, right? And I feel like, right, what, as we're doing these action plans, we're always thinking about the importance of young people being in the forefront of young people, challenging these ideas of young people, um, forcing and kind of pushing older folks to come out of their comfort zone, right? I think Dr. Ross is spot on that we are all about shifting and changing the narrative that has been in place for so long, right? And for me, this experience of the YPI was something new, was something different, but also was very empowering to me because it made me realize that my voice does matter and this is the space for me to do that, a space where I have been in situations where we are trying to move and change in the action plans, right? I've seen it firsthand, I've seen it in my community, and now I'm in a position where I'm able to grant money. I'm in a position where I can fund organizations. I can fund movements that are doing the work that I would have loved to have seen when I was a young person in these communities. For me, it was something that I feel like needs to be highly invested into more, right? More um, institutions should be doing this, right? More institutions should be funding young people and training them and teaching them what this philanthropy institute looks like, right? What does it even look like to grant money, right? Because when we as a collective were working on the grant making process, we were like, this is cool, this is fun. Yeah, let's give money. But we didn't realize all the hoops that we had to jump. We didn't realize all the little steps that had to come into place, right? And I think as a collective, we were definitely thankful with um, the money that we were able to grant, um, the organizations and small groups that we were able to grant as well. And I think we were very intentional as we were granting our money, right, to these different organizations and small groups for them to align with our action plan. Like Dr. Ross mentioned, right, we were very centered in trauma-informed and healing youth trauma. So a majority of our money went to healing youth trauma foundations or to organizations, right? A big part of our money also went towards um, leadership pipeline, right, which is really huge. And I know Gio is going to talk a little bit about that, right, the importance of it. So when we were creating and when, when we were funding money, we were very intentional with doing this, but also being mindful that we have our ears to the ground so we know where, what our community needs and what they um, would like to see. And I think that's why PYC is very unique in that sense because all of us are young people who are on the ground, who are doing the work and know what our community needs and how we can show up for them and what's the best way as well. Um, just a quick follow-up question. This is just more in general of like your experience in PYC. What would you say would be a highlight or something you would walk away with um, through your engagement in the President's Youth Council? I would say a lot of development, right? As a young person, um, I'm only 21, right? And I feel like being in PYC, I've been able to gain so much and to develop myself as a young person, as an organizer. And I think I've been given a taste of what philanthropy looks like, right? And I think for me, um, when I was a lot younger, 15, 14, I was like, I want to be in those positions. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to be like Dr. Ross one day, right? To be in that chair. But being now in the President's Youth Council and being on the flip side of it, I'm like, wow, it's a lot of work, right? There's all these little things that I now need to show up for, all these things that I now need to really take into consideration. So for me, there's been a lot of development and growth in my part, where now I'm like, I really wanna do philanthropy. What is the next step for me? What does that look like now that I have some experience and I kind of know what it looks like as well. Thank you, Carla. Um, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about uh, what, what are some things that we could do to uh, strengthen youth adult partnerships. Um, and Gio, I know that in part of our action plan, we talked about creating a pipeline, creating a ladder where youth participants could take up space for like a staff member and be in full-time positions and continue on their uh, professional development. Um, so I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about what this like an infrastructure can look like for you and what does that, uh, what do you want to do? I know you're uh, in a much like younger age range in the youth um, spectrum. Definitely. Um... Thank you, Dr. Ross um, and Lupe for, and Carla also just for starting up. Um, and I think when we're talking about 
creating a youth uh, pipeline, we have to be really invested into youth power. Um, with that being is youth led, youth driven, youth oriented, um, youth paved. And I think when I first came into the um, PYC, I was 16. I didn't know what any of this was. Like I had just learned what a W9 was. Um, and I think they really invested into me um, at, such a, at such a young age, knowing that I was just now learning certain topics, um, really starting to be into this group, um, into this organizing work of networking on a statewide level. Um, so I definitely think it's about investing into youth, but investing into youth much lower than 16. It's um, grabbing youth in middle school, um, 12 and 13, about um, putting them into these positions of power. Um, I'm, 17 going on to 18 soon. Um, and I think seeing that I have a um, unique experience in high school um, and just being a minor um, in the US alone, I've been able to craft a different uh, ideologies and different experiences, viewpoints, perspectives that not just you know folks like Carla or Lupe can be able to grasp on um, so tightly. So I think it's about really investing into youth at such a younger age. Um, and I know that sometimes scares uh, board members and Dr. Ross, um, especially when we're talking about these conversations about bringing in new PYC members, but it's about taking that risk and it's about seeing um, what do we actually see in that young person that makes, uh, um, that makes them scared and why, uh, why is it making them scared that why, um, why is that the thought of bringing someone on making them scared is when we know that that young person is powerful and that they're going to be very um, gentle, unique, and um, creative with their work that they bring to the endowment and to California and to the U.S. Um, by itself. Uh, coming, um, when talking about a pipeline, um, we have to understand that it can be tokenizing and that we have to be able to guide youth and navigate youth through so many different uh, systems and structures and so many different trainings. Like I said, I have to learn about so much and I'm continuing learning as I go through the President's Youth Council. Um, it's about understanding the points of entry, understanding um, that young adults, um, youth and uh, youth, young adults, transitional age youth are still navigating through their careers and pipelines. Um, many of our President's Youth Councils are still in college. Carla just graduated, so woo -woo. Um, I'm also graduating high school. So it's about understanding where we navigate um, and how are we better giving them into their career and pathways because not everyone wants to be in philanthropy. Not everyone sees themselves working in social justice. So it's about how do we craft a professional development pipeline that is tailored to getting them to their career so they can be successful in that. Um, also, it's about movement and movement and build skill um, strategies. It's about the knowledge that we know um, about building building bridges from our communities to TCE and that those should be the young people. Um, those should be young people doing it. Um, it should be uh, the help, it should be the support that the endowment and PYC gives to young people to be able to successfully build those bridges so that we can create um, an intergenerational and intersectional trajectory that is tailored to what we call youth organizing, to what we call youth power um, that isn't tokenizing, that isn't marginalizing them, that isn't um, just bringing them on because, oh, we just want to look diverse or we want to say that we have youth on board, but by actually grasping their voices, their stories, their experiences, and um, making sure that shows up in our next um, in our next 10 years, in our next 50 years of the endowment. Um, and it looks like one of the PYC members being in Dr. Ross's seat, it looks like, well, what if we had Carla being the next CEO? What if I was the next CEO? What if, um, what if, what if we actually had those different stairs, um, those stairs to what the CEO um, of the endowment looks like? And I know that's scaring Dr. Ross right now, um, but it's definitely uh, taking the risk. It's um, seeing what PYC has thought in me, um, that they should be thinking in other folks um, that, that's the reason um, why why we're so scared and why it's going to be a scary process investing into youth at a younger age. But we y'all should be scared. I'm gonna just say y'all should be scared because the youth are here to run. We are here to take over, um, and we are here to be able to um, address y'all and to advise y'all. Um, so yeah, that's what I believe um, in the youth pipeline. I, I am afraid, Gio, but it's a good kind of afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it's, it's, um, it's the it's it's the fear of, of a, a roller coaster ride fear. So you know it's going to be great, but it's sometimes it's scary along the way. Definitely, we're coming for that seat, Doctor Ross. We're coming. Thank you, y'all. And actually, Doctor Ross, um, 
it'd be it'd be it'd be good to hear from you what you think a youth adult partnership looks like knowing that you've been in partnership with with us for like years um and what what would that look like for other folks who want to engage young people yeah i think I've, what i've learned uh lupe from you know my experience with the youth council is sometimes sometimes you can um tokenize you you bring young people on board to get engaged and and you can token if you're not careful you really can tokenize their participation um you know they're not window dressing um they're not um you know a fashion thing like a you know a pocketbook or a bracelet um you you really have to bring young people on board uh with the level of seriousness that adults you know see in one another and that's that that you know that requires humility it requires um uh grace and dignity um uh, because young people by definition are um both passionate and impatient um and 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 will and will push me and push us to uncomfortable places but in order for this country to address uh structural inequality racial inequality economic exclusion all of these issues, we, we have to take ourselves to uncomfortable places, to new places. And that's exactly what the PYC does for me. Um, even if I don't do everything they want me to do, uh, they're pushing me to, to new places and pushing the organization to new places. And that's exactly what we need um, in philanthropy. And that's exactly what we need in Congress. That's what we need in the Senate. That's what we need in, in school districts. That's what we need in mayor offices, is the voices and participation of young people. Uh, to push us further for full inclusion, for full economic participation, for full health and wellness. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Yeah, and I think right now we have a lot more like systems and institutions who want to engage young people. Um, and it'd be really interesting to see like, you know, what can PYC offer for folks and advice on what it means to partner up um, with an institution. Um, and I know we're, we're like about to, um, wrap up some time, but I want to hear just one last time from Gio and Carla. Um, what would be um, an advice you all will share with young people as they step into these spaces in partnership with adults? I think for me, it's definitely creating authentic and real relationships, right? I think that's something that we've been working at. Um, with the endowment and their board, creating authentic relationships and not just surface level relationships, right? I think, um, especially when doing adult and youth partnership, it's meeting young people halfway and vice versa, understanding adultism, understanding how oftentimes our privilege can come into place and because of our age, how sometimes, right, there's this assumption that young people don't know anything and vice versa, but there's always room to grow, always room to learn and always room to work together. And I think PYC is creating this intergenerational approach, right, where we're always trying to work and to invite um, our elders into space as well. Um, yeah, I think a piece of advice I'd uh, say is probably being vulnerable um, is to be able to voice what you need. I think coming into these spaces um, can be scared. It can be, um, I know it's for me being scared, being able to sit in front of like 15 people I barely knew um, in front of Dr. Ross, in front of the board. Um, and I still get scared to these days, but I think it's being, it's being able to be vulnerable and to be able to say what you need um, in that time right now, because um, it's not every day that, you know, you'll be able to be in front of the CEO um, and he's sitting here asking you what you need as a young person, as an activist, as a person um, living in Richmond or living in Fresno, Los Angeles. Um, so I think it's being able to take those opportunities and to be able to be vulnerable. Um, it's whether it looks like you need transportation, whether it's like you need um, mental health days, whether you need whatever it looks like, um, that these folks are here to help you um, and that you should be able to take these opportunities and take these dis um, these disadvantages, these advantages, um, and then also not being able to be scared um, in these spaces because at the end of the day, they are helping you. Um, they are the ones who will be able to be building these bridges um, and navigating and guiding you um, to do them and implement. 
Yeah, Lupe, if I may, I just want to say, uh, echo what, what Gio just said and, and Carla, it's important that these young people not show up pretending to be an adult. <laughs> um, you know, show up with your full selves, with your full passions and your full vision, because that's the value that's being added with the youth council. I mean, I already have a board of directors of 50 year olds and 60 year olds and 70 year olds. And, 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 and I, don't, I don't need my youth council showing up exactly the way they do. I need the youth council showing up with their full selves and bringing it to the table. And, and what Gio said, sometimes that means being vulnerable and sharing your, your greatest fears and your struggles, as well as your dreams and your hopes. And that's the value of the conversation. Yes, thank you, Dr. Ross. Um, yeah, and I think right now we're seeing a lot more um, the value of young people's voices in decision-making spaces um, and how we, when we move to youth adult equity, right, we, we are allowing uh, and giving power to young people's lived experiences. And that comes like also acknowledging uh, their, their trauma and knowing that when they expose and they become vulnerable, right, that they're also healing um, in, in these spaces. So I, I do think it's a, uh, it's a learning um, space for both the, the folks who are sharing power with the young people. Um, so we are at time. Um, are there any last remarks, Dr. Raza, you would want to share and you could close us out? No, I just think I know, for, I know uh, this, this is an audience that cares about economic inclusion and full participation and COVID has really unmasked um, savage inequities in economic dislocation and health dislocation um, in our country. And so this is yet another moment to make sure we invite young people to be in shared space with us as we think about strategy and policy and systems change and having young people as, as equal meaningful partners um, and not as, um, as not as window dressing. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, our, our President's Youth Council and the way we did it, it's, it's not perfect. It, it, we started with some bugs and mistakes. Um, we learned from the young people how to do it better. Uh, but I just encourage all um, in the mission uh, investing work and the um, impact investing work, uh, try to find a way to get young people involved and participating at the table with these strategies. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, and I hope you all are enjoying the rest of the sessions this week.